Welcome to the Momentum Lifestyle Podcast, where we interview an inspiring, educational, and entertaining guest to help you build confidence, find balance, and live a life of impact. We'd like to thank our sponsor today, Be Spunky. Now, Blake, Janoa, and myself have been using their Reboot product for well over six months now, and it has been life-changing. I found myself recovering faster, having way more energy throughout the day, and honestly feeling just more jacked up as a man. And this is because Reboot is clinically formulated to support healthy male hormone levels, providing stress relief, improved strength and stamina, enhanced drive, and overall well-being. B-Spunky Reboot contains a proprietary blend of 10 natural and organic herbs and active ingredients that are renowned for helping men to enhance physical and cognitive performance, improve stamina, energy, and endurance, optimize testosterone levels, support healthy reproductive function, support cardiovascular function, relieve stress, mild anxiety, irritability, relieve tiredness, fatigue, support healthy sleep patterns, and support healthy body weight. So as you can see, it is a must-have product for all men. So head to their website, bespunky.com.au, that's B-E-S-P-U-N-K-I.com.au, and use the code MOMENTUM to receive 10% off all B Spunky products. Zoe Bosco, welcome to the podcast. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. I am very excited to chat all things energy, energetics, wealth, and everything in between. But before we do, can you give a 60 to 90 second spiel about you, your life, and the wizardry work that you bring to the world? Okay, 60 to 90 seconds. Well, I'm based in Byron Bay now. I have a beautiful space up here that I call the Ode, and that's where I do a lot of my work from. I am a kinesiologist, but I really just feel more like a creative these days and weave kinesiology into everything that I do. Um, I've recently written a book and that's come out this year. Um, I dabble in birth work and um, I'm a doula when that calls me. So yeah, I, I guess my nature is very creative and I like doing many different things, but kinesiology is like the foundation of my work that I weave through everything. So good intro. Know. I liked yeah. it. <laughs> For those that don't know, I have done plenty of work with Zoe, which was actually my intro to energy work which would have been five years ago do you reckon about that for sure yeah and at the time I had no understanding of what energy work or energetics meant um but just felt called to kind of explore it so for those who may not understand it or might have a little idea how would you best describe it so I think my path of energy work really began um, when I found kinesiology because it was the first practice that I found that worked on um, the non-tangible subconscious field of our being that created tangible results. Mm -hmm. And I was fascinated by that, that we could shift something somewhere in our energetic system and then throughout Um, a process of time and space come to embody a new tangible experience um, in the physical material world. So the fact that we can shift something energetically and then see a physical tangible result um, in perfect divine timing um, fascinates me Mm -hmm. and brings me so much joy as a creative. So I guess there's many ways that you could describe it, but the way I understand it is we are we are a, co- a beautiful complex blend of energy and matter and everything begins as energy, mm. right? If you think of our soul coming into the physical realm, when we're conceived, we begin as energy and we return to energy. So everything begins as energy. And once, once something manifests, whether it's an embodied expression or something physically outside of ourselves, it has existed in the energetic realm for a long time before that. Mm and made its way into tangible material expression through, um, I guess, a combination of thoughts, beliefs, emotional energy behind it, um, embodied action and the things that we choose that all really culminates into the material expression of what we experience. So energy work is really working on, 
I guess, the energetics of our system. And the way I tap into that is through the subconscious field. And I really use the chakra system for that. The chakra system is like our energetic centers of our being that hold different flavors of our nature and they hold our conditioning. I guess, and our true potential. So when we start to work on the subconscious mind and shift things energetically through our chakras, we can start opening up new potentials of experience in the in the world. Um, yeah. Do you have any further questions? Do that. That's do it good. justice. That, that's good. <laughs> so one of the, I, I think as well, I could probably speak um, between you and Pixie. I reckon I would have done sixty or seventy sessions. Is <laughs> which is a lot is um, as blokes and obviously this being a, a blokes pod- podcast in particular, but not exclusive to them is we tend to get really caught in our head, which, you know, you can do everything you want to understand the subconscious mastering the mind um, and bringing that into the physical in terms of what habits behaviors do you create off the back of that. But what I noticed from my own experience is that the top-down approach in terms of the head and, and how that affects kind of your life has its place, but also the bottom up. Mm-hmm. And for most blokes, they do top-down pretty good. Yeah. But why I was drawn to kinesiology, albeit I didn't realize at the time, was that my energetic and emotional body was blocking me massively from moving through certain things in life so i could you know do my best to think my way through a a situation or a pattern or a you know limitation but i would still get pulled off course based on my energetic or emotional body so you know whether that's you know for the for some people that have that are listening would have heard me talk about this a couple of times the first half of the year really for me was around connection and to be able to explore deep into like I knew I needed to be better at connection I knew I was breaking down with connections I knew there was lots of friction but I just couldn't muscle my way through to finding the answers and until I cleared my emotions in my energetic body, I continued to have like unnecessary friction with people. And then, you know, now from a money point of view, I've spent three or four years working at it from a mind point of view. And that's got me to a certain place. But for the time being, that mind part isn't going to get me to the next layer and level when it comes to kind of wealth and money and business. So I really think, you know, and I've preached hard on this work now for kind of six months. And there's a reason I do it every week that to integrate top down and bottom up really does make a massive difference. What, what type of results, I mean, you know, have you seen when it comes to your clients and potentially blokes in particular, just the nature of this podcast that transforming the physical but the way that you worked with it obviously wasn't a physical um, approach in terms of energy work. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I guess my approach is very energetic just Mm. by nature of being kinesiology. So, you know, someone might come to me with an intention of wanting to earn more money if we're looking through that focus. Right. Mm. Um, And so we'll come up with an intention that represents what they're wanting to um, step into and experience. And by nature, the intention that we would create would be an intention that they're not already harmonized with, or it Mm. already triggered, it already brings up some energetic, like discomfort or, Mm. you know, and you can start to notice it in someone's like physical um, posture and the way they start to move if they're uncomfortable with the intention. And that's what you really want to start to create is find that point of discomfort Mm. to really support that person to feel the energetic um, discord in their system. And the way I see like the energy that needs to shift is pockets of unprocessed emotion or past experiences that are like just haven't been held in the way that they needed to at that time to be um 
resolved, right? So they, they start to pull in the system. And if we go our whole lives or, you know, half of our life even without looking in and doing any energetic cleanup, we get backlogs of um, unprocessed emotion and unprocessed experiences in life that just start to clog our energy system like you've spoken of. And when we start to reach for dreams or call in new experiences, because we've got this like complex web of unprocessed emotion that contradicts many things, especially what we're wanting to call in, doesn't matter how much we try to think our way there, that's always going to be a block until we go back in and go back and like hold those parts of self and acknowledge what's happened and feel what's there. And that can be scary for people, but mm -hmm. I think that, you, you'll probably vouch for this the more you lean into it the less scary it becomes and the more fun and pleasurable and exciting it can become you know to mm. actually have that release and then feel that true um synergistic resonance with your desire and then come into union with that through physical tangible form so I guess the process I work with is finding that peace that triggers someone but it's it really represents what they truly value and desire to bring in and then I would start to use kinesiology to find whether they've got chakras out of alignment with that or past experiences um, that are blocking that um, intention from being harmonized in the conscious and subconscious field. And that can, that then is like a rabbit hole to explore. You know, you can go on wild, beautiful, deep, profound journeys with someone in their subconscious field because it's literally not just their past experiences um, of this lifetime but you've got past lives lineages like inherited pro like so much in there to unpack and really what you're doing there is going back in time to access a pocket of unprocessed emotion or memory and once it comes to conscious awareness you're literally just joining dots for people so they can mentally understand what's been there and also feel and process what's been there. And once that happens, the like our body and whole system is phenomenal at releasing what doesn't serve us, but we have to bring our conscious awareness to it first before it can be released. So I guess I'd invite like the, um, I guess, the concept of like rather than like the mind versus the body or thinking or feeling it's like it, we have to do it all together mm. it has to be like in coherence our mind and body synergize and coherent our thoughts and feelings and belief coherent you know um mm. that they work together as a team so it's less of being in a battle between mind and body and thinking or feeling and it's like that that all just has to come together mm. and we can work with all aspects of our system in um, harmony and that's when we start to really flow with our, our true life force and like create incredible things in ourselves mm. and in our lives what you said um that i think will really resonate with a lot of people and hopefully have them change their perception of um what happens is the the triggers and the resistance so we live in a world, especially kind of blokes that will try to force their way through the, those triggers or resistance or even worse, see that as like, oh, I shouldn't go here and just like go back to their old way of living. But what you said there, so nice, it was like there's a gold nugget and an opportunity yeah. in that. What, yeah. does that. what does that look like and what, what should a guy be um, looking to from a feeling point of view or a, a story that might be created off the back of that yeah I, like I was literally feeling into this last night because obviously I my work is to take people into those trigger mm. states to support them to move through what's activated and feel a sense of peace or love or acceptance or harmony or whatever it is to mm. no longer be triggered right and I think even the word trigger can be triggering these days because it's been used so much. And last night I was like, wow, I'm so grateful for triggers. Like I, I like, what if we could bring gratitude to that experience? Mm. Because knowing that we can't actually heal and evolve without being triggered, mm. like we can't um, sidestep that, 
you know, and the more we do, the more we're prolonging what we truly desire and value and um, block like true manifestation like the the things that want to come into our lives that are really meant for us that will fulfill us right so I think really firstly reframing what a trigger is and the experience of being triggered because yes it can be uncomfortable but the more we become comfortable in the full spectrum of our feelings Mm. and not shame our feelings, not make any feelings better or worse than others, not any feelings right or wrong. The more we start to neutralize our, um, you know, perception of our feelings and not project onto what we're feeling in any moment and hold space for the full spectrum of feelings, knowing every feeling frequency supports us to tap into wisdom or, um, you know, those gold nuggets that you are talking about we can really start to actually value being triggered. And if you value being triggered, you're going to see the wealth in that, right? You're going to see, like, you're going to value that experience mm-hmm. and be like, oh, whoa, I'm triggered. Okay, what's here for me? Mm-hmm. Rather than, oh, fuck, I'm triggered. I need to, like, you know, start to, like, mm-hmm. dodge and, like, sidestep because it's, it's not okay, right? Mm-hmm. So I think really cultivating, like, a loving, like, relationship with that experience, knowing mm-hmm. that it's, part of the process and it's human and we all experience it um and it's it's actually what i feel um an indication that your system is saying you're so ready to heal this piece or feel this piece because Mm. what you're desiring and what you're speaking of what you're wanting to call in is on the other side of this Mm. you're almost there like just feel this piece you know Mm. and and move through yeah i mean you i I couldn't have said any better like it's perfect to be able to use just just completely change your perspective on triggers and your world completely opens up one of the things that i've been working with picks on is actually the fear of being successful which you know often we talk about like the fear of failure and and you know for many of us we've grasped that pretty well but the fear of success is really interesting as well and two parts for me that come up is like the anxiety involved in that, but also the fear of a issue around humility of like, can I not be a dick and work my way up, you know, from a financial point of view and, and um, an impact point of view as well. What, what are some of the common maybe emotions, stories or feelings that come up for people when it comes to expansion from a, from a wealth point of view and, you, you obviously use the word wealth in kind of all contexts of the word, but what, what are some kind of common themes that might come up for people that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, I, I love this question because it's something I've experienced massively as well. Like, like you, you spoke to, you know, and maybe it could go either way, but for most people we work through our fears of failure and then we start, you know, succeeding at the things we truly want, right? And then we hit up against our um, limitations and programming around success and what that should look like and the dogmas and what's acceptable and all of those sorts of things. And it's been coming up massively for me over the last year or two. Um, and also, like like anything, starting to come into my field with clients and things like that. So I feel like it's so layered and complex as everything. Um, but if we are fearful of being successful or that starts to get triggered, right? First of all, it indicates there's a lack of safety on some level of being seen and celebrated um, in your success, winning, doing well. And, you know, gosh, I can think back, there's multiple, 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 multiple years of experience for me in childhood, performing and dancing and all of these things. Like it's so laid and complex how we get programmed around um, being celebrated and, you know, how our school friends treated us around that. Did they celebrate us or did we get bullied, you know, if we were doing well or, you know, this, it's so deep, the programming. Um, so I feel like the, the big piece is around being seen, right? Because if you think about success, it is that like um, open, like shiny kind of state of I've achieved something, right? I've been working towards something. I've been recognized whether by myself or others, and I've achieved something and, um, 
you know, manifested something that I've desired, right? And that's one part of it. And then being able to hold that and be seen in that and mm. celebrated and recognized and be able to like meet that experience is a whole nother experience. And I mm. have definitely sabotaged my own um, success over the years because of a fear of being um, losing friends, feeling judged for like, um, you know, oh, she thinks she's so good or whatever, like, you know, all of the ego stuff gets activated. Um, and what I notice, I'll speak from my own experience for a moment. What I've noticed is how quickly I can um, diminish my achievements and my success and like, just like, oh, shut them down quickly um, out of a fear of being in that spotlight, you know, and being seen and what people might think of me, especially if I perceive others around me uncomfortable in that or maybe not um, achieving what they desire, you know, you can kind of become sensitive around that. So I feel like it's a, a it's layered, but it definitely speaks to a safety piece. Like, do we feel safe in our body to be successful and seen in that and recognized in that and celebrated in that? And um a power piece like can we hold that for ourselves you know and whether we're um, seen and recognized and validated and celebrated externally can we really validate that and, and hold that and celebrate that and be grateful for those experiences ourselves you know mm. um, yeah it's such a big one somebody who embodies their work very well what does that look like for you now is it your can you hold yourself in pride? Is it still something that you struggle to speak around certain people? Like what's what's it's, happening on an emotional charge for you there now? It's definitely circumstantial, like depending mm. on who I'm around yeah. and um, yeah. And, and also the state of my nervous system. Like if I'm grounded and regulated and mm. um, doing all the things that I need to do to feel like good and solid in my body, I'm, I'm less likely to waver in that because I've been consciously working on it, mm. um, intentionally working on it. Um, but if I'm not as grounded, a little bit dysregulated, and I'm in like a social setting and kind of get thrown off guard, my protective mechanism is to go small mm. and, and come inward. And I, that's just still where I'm at, you know, and, I, and I'm okay with that. Like, I feel like, oh, that's like just where I'm at it's not where I'm always going to be but it's where I'm at right now because my system doesn't feel safe around that capacity of people to be seen like mm. for example when my book came out I only felt like safe enough to do a small book launch like mm. 20 people um and that was enough on my nervous system like that was huge for me being seen in that way and that really illuminated how much was in my system around um, being seen in success. Cause I think there's mm. two different things we can be quietly achieving and successful and like, you know, in our own kind of like um, flow and that might feel really safe. So we're not really outwardly validated or recognized, but when we start to become recognized or validated externally or seen externally, whether it's our social um, network or friends or loved ones or wider community, that puts another lens on things and can trigger different aspects of self, right? I feel like I'm having a personal um, therapy session here because I'm, <laughs> so I'm having so many moments that are going off as you're saying it. What, what can, firstly, I think every bloke should do this type of work zero doubt about that it's I, yeah love it so much where does someone start so let's say they don't have access to you to kind of help them clear these emotions and and help them re-regulate their nervous system what does step one look like even to kind of start to move in the right direction mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like step one is like really um, acknowledging the desire to change mm. something about yourself um, or reach for something new um, and really honoring that desire. I feel like step one is really honoring your true desires and acknowledging them and then calling in the support that's right for you because mm. there's so many ways you can tap into the subconscious these days. You know, we're, we're so well versed in like... Um, modalities I guess mm. um 
that we can access it in many different ways. So I think the step one is most people are aware of that burning desire that sits in their system, mm. but whether or not it's being acknowledged and spoken and um, uh, honored is another mm. thing. So I think the first step is to really go inward and be like, I really want to feel this way within myself, where I really want to experience this, where I really want to manifest this and call this into my life. And I think it's acknowledging that, honoring that, choosing to find someone or something that's going to support you to start on that journey. Mm. I think the beginning stages, I think meditation is like an incredible first step because it starts to bring you internal. Mm. Um, and cultivating that connection with your inner realm is massive because that is like probably the easiest way to start building a relationship with your energetics, right? We're mm. so, um, I guess, prone to being like outward facing and externally engaged um, with the lives that we live. And I think it takes um, courage and time to cultivate that inner connection and when you get to a certain level of self-connection, you start to want to be in that space with yourself more mm. and more and more. And um, yeah, meditation is an incredible tool for that because it starts to bring you inward and not only starts to bring your awareness inward, it also starts to like harmonize your system in beautiful mm. ways. And I mean, I'm an advocate for kinesiology because yep. it just has completely changed my life and blown mm. my mind time and time and time again. Like I never... I, I, it never ceases to amaze me. Like after all these years, my mind blows all the time with the changes that I see, um, you know, and I think to give you some examples of like working with men over the years of like, you know, beginning with men and, and feeling them up in their heart and guarded and unable to tap into their feelings and over a course of sessions, like, feeling them feel and, and move emotion through their body, whether they're shedding tears or screaming or like, you know, sometimes I get them to punch in the air, like it's just expressing energy and emotion mm. over, over time, you start to feel them connect inward and, and return to that sense of self. Right. Mm. And it doesn't actually take that long to connect back inward with self. Um, mm. Yeah, so I would find kinesiology or um, any other modality that inspires you or calls to you because I'm a big believer that the modality that's right for us or the medicine that's right for us in the moment will start to like show up in our field. So if it's repeated to you by five different people, like seek it out, mm. you know, or if a certain book has been recommended multiple times, like I, I believe the things that are meant for you won't miss you, you know, mm. but we need to pay attention to the information that's being given us and then act on that. Yeah, which would be the, the bit that I'd add to that is the awareness bit because um, the universe has always thrown you signs. I think um, if we were to generalise, um, at least from my experience, I'd say that women are slightly more aware than men. So heightening your awareness around that of like what's showing up and what's not and even to expand on that heightening your awareness around how you feel because yes. that would really give you amazing insight. And even um, to speak about one of our first sessions, um, which still makes me a little bit uncomfortable was, I don't know if you remember this, was my relationship to the feminine and, yeah. you know, my own perception that the feminine was weak and, yeah. um, you know, the stories that I had created off the back of that and then to kind of unpack that as well so if you can you know even as a bloke if you can just start to be the observer of your thoughts be the observer of you know those feelings that are coming up for you be the observer of the resistance and instead of seeing that as like a roadblock and you know don't go here it's actually a really good opportunity to you know work with a kinesiologist to go there to go through there um, in order to level up as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the piece to add on that is trusting that whatever is getting activated or coming up for you in the moment um, is what you're ready to move into. Mm. Like our, we, we don't actually get activated in anything that we're not ready to feel or move mm. through. 
you know, so really like actually trusting in yourself to move through pieces. And mm. I love that you bring up that session because it just reminds me to speak to like, you know, that our inner masculine, our inner feminine energy, mm. we're so deeply programmed by our relationship with our parents and um, those early um, uh, models of masculine femininity. And we get unconsciously programmed by that, by their expressions around us. So you could literally just start to reflect on um, what was my mother like with her feelings or what was my father like with his feelings? Like what, how did they manage that? Right. And you can start to go, Oh, well, if they manage their feelings and emotions in that way or mismanaged, right. Um, if they were either overexpressed or underexpressed or dysregulated or whatever, it's most likely going to be programmed in us, right. Um, in some way. So mm. it's, it's probably one of the most powerful beginning points of um, inner work is like, what was my relationship like with my parents? Who were they like? In, you know, how did they express their emotions and all of those sorts of things and then mm. start to use that as a mirror inward. One thing I will say on this, and I want to talk about your book in a sec as well, and I'm also mindful of time, is probably one of the most common themes, uh, again, at least from my experience and in my world with um helping people raise their awareness is a really good starting point is that awareness, especially in the early stages can almost feel like a double-edged sword in terms of heightening your awareness is the catalyst for, you know, incredible change and heightening your awareness also can feel like a little bit of a roller coaster when you start paying attention to the feelings and the thoughts. So if you do feel like you're going through a little, little bit of a roller coaster that you're not used to, yeah. it's super common coming out of that autopilot, that kind of, um, you know, disassociated state that many of us are in. So just something to, to be mindful of as well. Um, anything uh, you'd add to that? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, uh, what wants to come through is like being gentle on yourself. Mm. Like we're, we're all human. I think when we can, when we're in those um, bigger, I guess, experience of heightened emotional states or triggered states and those um, first um, moments of new awareness where we're like, mm. oh my gosh, this has been playing out my whole life. Whoa. And this has mm. been the block to all of these things and this has been the energy that's like manifested all of these things and you start to like see really clearly it's like someone comes in and turns like the volume of light up in your home and you see all the parts where you haven't cleaned or looked right mm. it's it's big right and and I think knowing that that's big for everyone even people who are well versed at doing inner work like mm. it does get easier and less scarier but less scary but it's always when we come into new states of awareness or new um, uh, ability to see who we've been or how we've been unconsciously programmed and unconsciously behaving is to really hold that lovingly and mm. gently because it's, it's unconscious, right? It's, it hasn't been seen, but in this moment, it's coming up to be seen, meaning it's something that's no longer serving you. Mm. Right. And it's, and it's once you move through those emotions and that energy, whatever wants to be healed, it becomes experiential wisdom that's going to serve the rest of your life. Mm. Right. So I really love like the, the belief system of everything serves and everything's, there's a gift in everything. Mm. Like when I started to take on those beliefs, beliefs, everything serves, there's a gift in everything. I was able to look back into some of the most traumatic experiences of my life, some of the most painful experiences of my life that were, you know, I'd been trying to heal that were still unresolved. I was able to look back upon them with different light and mm. feel empowered in my journey, whether it's really heightened and like a bit overwhelming and confronting, or if I'm in like a more like gentle experience. And um, I guess I want to share this piece the word um, confronting um, can also be a bit uh, charged, I guess, mm. you know, I don't want to be confronted. I don't want to see, you know, and so I've shifted that word into in front, mm. you know, it's like something that's just in front of you, mm. right? So the confronting energy of what we um, might see within us can start to activate the nervous system initially and dysregulate us because we start to go into fight 
flight or freeze or fawn mm. or whatever it is towards what we might find within ourselves. <laughs> but if you shift like confronting into um, in front, it's just something coming in front of awareness for you to see in this moment, for you to hold gently and reintegrate into being. It just starts, like for me, it's helped me to meet things much more gracefully. Mm, great call. <laughs> um, where can people get your book, check you out, and how would someone who's beginning this work best use your book? Obviously read it, but can you give a little like spiel on how, how they can use your book? Yes. Yeah, so um, I guess the book for me, um, I, I wrote it last year and the intention behind it was to really hand the tool of self-muscle testing, which is, um, you know, a tool of kinesiology over to everyone. I, I'm so passionate about like, empowering my clients and anyone who works with me and inspiring them to be their own inner healer, their own inner guide and trust that they know what's best for them. So the book was really inspired um, by the desire to really empower um, everyone with a tool that has completely empowered me and changed my life. And I don't want to be, you know, the one just holding on to it. And, you know, you have to come and see me for a session for it. It's like, no, take it, like embody it, learn it. It's a way of life. It's not just, um, you know, used in sessions. So the book um, is designed to be like a first intro to muscle testing and working with energetic, um, energetics really through words because every word that we speak holds energy and um, holds like a, like a complex web of energy based on how we've experienced life with that word. So for example, love will have all of these memories associated with it, right? Just this one single word. And so will wealth or richness or money. Like if you say money, you can sometimes see people's bodies start to like jitter and change. It's like that is activating energy in your body based on past experiences and um, perceptions and beliefs that you have. Right. So you can say one word and activate um, the subconscious energetic um, conditioning. Right. So I really wanted people to have an easy yet inspiring um, process of working with word frequencies and energetics and feeling how they can change their inner vibration towards these words and therefore then start to see the changes in tangible manifestation outside mm. of them so the book is really um you know if there's three different parts it's um a bit of inspiration a little bit about my journey i didn't go much into that in this book um the basics of self-muscle testing and then the last 10 chapters are designed to take yourself through self-healing Mm. and look within and there's journal questions and there's prompts to self-clear and then there's embodiment practices because I really see if, if we break it down you really just want to be illuminating what's blocking you and then able to elevate your system to a new way of being and then embody it right that's mm. like the process of change so it's all in the book and I just got back from Melbourne from recording it on audio, which is super exciting. It was really great. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I edited a little bit of it and kind of added a few bits in. So the audio version is um, a little bit evolved from the book and that should be out within the month on um, uh, BorrowBox um, and Belinda and potentially Audible and yet to confirm that. Awesome. Um, but the book is available online through um, Booktopia and then in like big retail outlets and some bookstores across the country. Beautiful. Yeah. And um, where do people find out about you and your magic online as well? Uh, my website, uh, zoebosco.com or my Instagram is zoe underscore bosco. Um, yeah, everything's on there everything that I'm doing or I do have um, a website the ode as well and that's more that's more geared for women embodiment um, yeah products and rituals and things like that as well brilliant yeah. well guys yeah I can't talk highly enough of this kind of work which is why I do it every single week um, and have been involved since Zoe first took me through it 
five odd years ago. So definitely explore it. I, I do think as well as um, Zoe has explained it, that it's one of those things that is so much easier to comprehend when you actually experience it. So, um, and a lot of people have struggled to make sense of it until they've experienced it and seen the results firsthand. So that is actually definitely um, something that I'd encourage, but absolutely worth doing the um, energy work for sure. Zoe, you're a genius, a Jedi, and thank you for <laughs> coming on. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Thanks for tuning in this week. As always, if you enjoyed listening, please leave a review, give us a shout out across socials or share with a friend so that we can continue to share these incredible conversations with more and more people.